Welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. Today we're going to do something really different and interesting. At least I hope you find it different and interesting. We're going to talk about two books and we're going to talk about the film versions that were made based upon those books. The first, Reap the Wild Wind by Thelma Strabel, which was originally published in 1940 as a serialized story in the Saturday Evening Post. This is the 1944 reprint hardcover edition which came out after the film and the film was released in 1942 and was directed by the legendary Cecil B. DeMille and starred two of my favorites that would be John Wayne and Ray Milland. So we're going to talk about the difference between the film and the, the book. In addition to that because of the similarities in the stories I thought I would tackle Wake of the Red Witch by Garland Rourke, which was published in 1946, and this is the first edition hardcover. There are numerous copies of this book available. This is one of the easiest first editions to find anywhere. It seems to be everywhere. Um, and there were multiple editions after that. Um, here's Garland Rourke himself on the back, who wrote many other seafaring adventure novels, by the way, including Fairwind to Java, which I think was made into a movie in the late 40s, early 50s as well, and then The Wreck of the Running Gale, and so forth and so on. He had a really remarkable career. Um, Garland Rourke was born in 1904 and died in 1985, and he was pretty productive throughout his life. So interesting author there, and Thelma Strabel was born in 1900 and died in 1959. This is the only of her books that I've read, and here is what she looks like on the back. So she was also a best-selling author. So let's talk about the books first before we get into the films. The films are notable because the both films feature John Wayne in non, a non-Western role, and the endings are quite similar. Those of you familiar with the movies know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is probably a good point in the episode here to let you know there may be some spoilers involved. So if you don't want to know what happens, you should stop watching the video right now because I'm going to tell you how they end. Um, so between Reap the Wild Wind and Wake of the Red Witch, um, the writing, let's talk about the writing on these books. I think that they're about evenly matched. I have to give the nod to Garland Rourke for being a slightly better stylist. Uh, his book is also much longer. There's, this is a small font in here. Uh, but Strabel, Thelma Strabel was a good author. This is a really good book to read. Um, it it's surprised me, actually. I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is. So definitely I can understand clearly why she was a best-selling author and quite popular in her time. Uh, I haven't read anything else by her, but maybe if I find something, I will, and I'll do a follow-up episode. Garland Rourke, however, I have read other books by him, and he is one of those great authors who wrote riveting seafaring adventure tales, and there there are very few of those out there today. Um, Old-school, pulp-style, really lush writing with Garland, uh, Garland Rourke here, and Again, I think they're about evenly matched as far as the the quality of the writing. I recommend both books strongly. Again, I would give a little bit of a nod to Garland Rourke here. I think he was a little more accomplished at it. Um, so these books were then made into films. And Reap the Wild Wind, I have to hold the correct book in my hand when I'm talking about it. Reap the Wild Wind was the first to be made into a film, 1942, Cecil B. DeMille. And with John Wayne, Susan Hayward, Ray Milland, and Paulette Goddard uh, starring in the film. This was one of the, this is the Blu-ray, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful print. And this is a Technicolor film. Um, the colors are just vivid and bright in the movie. And this was one of the biggest hits of 1942. And I can see why. It does suffer somewhat from the stagey, theatrical direction that Cecil B. DeMille was known for, and that slows the pacing down dramatically. 
So you have to really look at the film in its proper context, which is, at the time, this was considered a big deal. The film works, though. I think it's a good film. It is considered a classic film of the era. And John Wayne certainly is on record as having enjoyed making the film. And this, in fact, the character, uh, he enjoyed playing the character so much that this led him to later playing the character of, of Rawls in Wake of the Red Witch, which is a better film. Um, but for those of you that love old classic movies, um, Reap the Wild Wind. Ray Milland was great, too. You know, I'm a Ray Milland fan. You don't hear a lot about him. People don't uh, talk about Ray Milland. He made some really interesting movies, uh, and he was really a great actor. Did you know he was a Welshman? So, anyways, it's a good film, and this edition... This 1944 edition features a foreword by Cecil B. DeMille where he talks about the attraction that this story had for him. It's really a, a woman's tale. Uh, you know, it follows the female characters uh, more so than the male characters. And the author, Thelma Strabel, was pretty popular, as I mentioned. So uh, he gives due, due credit there f to the author. And unfortunately, the cover is not the all-time greatest cover from this period um but again good book to read and the film the blu-ray if you're going to watch the movie get the blu-ray beautiful print uh this restoration on this is just wonderful so that leads us to garland rourke wake of the red witch now those of you familiar with wake of the red witch the film You'll note that in the beginning of the film, they actually show this book. They show this book with this cover. This is the 1946 edition, and they open the book. So for you trivia fans here, they open the book, and actor Gig Young, who appears in, in the movie, begins a narration as they open the book to the first chapter, which is right here. And they show that, and he reads like the first two lines of the first chapter. Here's the trivia. That section that he reads and that you can see, you can actually do a screen print of this. That is not part of the book. That was This was fabricated, I believe, by the screenwriters and by Republic Studios to lend the narration a, a little more ease in setting the stage so that you understand what the story is about. So the lines that Gig Young reads in the beginning, even though they're showing him opening the book, that's not in the book, at least as far as I've been able to determine. I've never seen a copy where those opening lines appear at the beginning of the paragraph. Uh, it really starts in the next the, the next paragraph. You can see in the print when they film it, you can see the opening paragraph, which is in the movie, it's the second paragraph. So they must have fabricated this and put it out there, unless there's a variant edition. If there is, you can let me know and use the comment section down below to let me know that there's a variant edition. I've never seen one. I suspect that's not true. It looks to me like they fabricated that opening paragraph for the narration exclusively so Gig Young, again, could set the scene. It's a great movie. Okay, It's a, it's a better book. Um, Garland... Rourke, as I mentioned, wrote some really remarkable books. I'm quite a fan. Um, again, there he is. I'll have scans of the book covers and the, the film posters at the end, so you can take a look at those. The film version is black and white, and it's really a great movie. It's almost film noir. Um, it has a kind of a creepy feel to it. And it was, this is where John Wayne came up with Batjack Productions, because Batjack is the company here, spelled a little differently in the film than it does for his production company, which he used after this until the remainder of his life. So Gig Young and Gail Russell, who appeared with John Wayne in The Angel and the Bad Man and also with Randolph Scott in Seven Men from Now. She unfortunately had a tragic life and I, th I think she died in the late 50s, early 60s, something like that. She didn't last long, uh, but she's quite effective in the movie. This is a great film. The ending on both Wake of the Red Witch and Reap the Wild Wind are well known because they're almost identical in the demise of the characters played by John Wayne. He literally is diving uh, to the bottom of the sea to plunder the sunken ships and he goes down with the ships 
because of a variety of dramatic events that occur. Uh, John Wayne rarely passed away in his films, as most of you know, but these two films, he plays a darker character in both films, which appealed to him, and both characters come to an end, uh, and almost almost identical. Um, some people believe because of that that um, Wake of the Red Witch is a remake of Reap the Wild Wind. They're not. It, it, totally different stories, obviously. They have similar plot devices uh, as far as uh, plundering the treasure from wreckages, which is a historical fact. There were people that did that. They're called wreckers, by the way. Um, I have some interesting books about that that I might have to do an episode about. So these are my picks for this week. Uh, kind of a double whammy here. I have the two books and the two films for you to watch. You know, Reap the Wild Wind and Wake of the Red Witch. Two classic 1940s seafaring adventure tales for you to seek out. And uh, let me know what you think if you find these books. I'm interested in your comments. You can always use the comment sections down below, with which some of you I, I know have done, and I really appreciate that. Subscribing to this channel, by the way, is free. And I have hopefully some interesting episodes coming up. In the meantime... Reap the Wild Wind and Wake of the Red Witch. Stay well, stay happy, feed your brain, read some books.